probably the most important thing I like about photography is how versatile it is. Whatever you are interested in, you can probably apply photography to it. And a big part of that versatility comes down to our modern camera systems with interchangeable lenses and a large collection of available choices of using different tools for different jobs. This is what makes photography so versatile. It uh, is a lot of fun. Uh, there is a lot of very interesting things that go on with lenses when you really dive in deep, which is what we're going to be doing in this class. Fuji makes a great collection, actually two collections of lenses. And you don't need all the lenses. What you need is you need a few lenses that fit your particular uses. And you can switch back and forth between those. And when you have the right setup, it really feels like you can accomplish anything that you want. Now, the key to really getting a good collection of lenses is knowing what you want to do and what you're going to shoot. So the first thing is, is what do you want to shoot? Now, some of us like to shoot everything, and there are lenses that are pretty good for that, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. But the more you know about your subject, the better you'll be able to pick a lens for that particular task. Now, you also need to know what your goals are. What are you trying to achieve? What is the end result? Are you going to have an image published? Are you going to put it on a website? Are you going to put it someplace else to hang it on the wall? Knowing what you're going to do with it is very important, but also is your style. There's a way that you like to shoot, that you like to present your images. And the more you know about all of these, the better lens choice you're going to be able to make when knowing what lens to purchase or what lens to use in a particular situation. Now, the goal of this class that we have here is to help you understand, first off, what lenses can do for you, the different focal lengths, the different apertures, and all of the different technology and features. There's lots going on in these lenses, and I really want to show you what all that they can do, because it is very interesting when you get into it. I want to show you how you can really solve certain photographic problems and compositional challenges that you might have with different types of lenses so that you can better tell the story that you want to tell with a particular photograph. We're going to go through all the different lenses. We're going to show you how to use them in here uh, for different types of applications. And we're going to really specifically focus on Fujifilm lenses. Well, I mean, after all, that's the name of the class and that's all that we have in front of us. And so a lot of this information does apply to all the other brands and different styles of lenses over the year, but we're really going to be focusing in on specifically the X and the G mount Fuji lenses here. They have a great collection. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of commonality between the two of them. So we're able to cover both of them very efficiently in this one class. Now, this class is not a traditional lens review. Now, I've been reading and watching lens review for decades. And a lot of times, those reviews have a couple goals in mind. One, does a lens meet a certain technical specification or quality to meet your, your needs? And for the most part, Fuji lenses, and a lot of the other brands too, but definitely Fuji lenses, 99.9% .9 of the time, they are not going to stop you from selling an image or providing an image to a client or somebody else who is wanting your photography. It's extraordinarily rare that somebody would say, oh, that image is not good enough quality because of the lens you use. That it's virtually unheard of. So all of these lenses are good enough for professional quality. Um, and then when it comes to reviews, a lot of it's about, you know, what is the features of a particular lens? And we're going to be talking a little bit about that in here. And a review is more about opinions of, well, how much do I like the way the controls work or this focal length? And I'm not really getting into those types of opinions in here. This is more of a full bore education on lenses and how to use lenses. This is not just me talking about the lenses. We're going to be talking about photography and how to use different focal lengths and different apertures. And so there's a lot of core photography in this class along with gear related. So it is quite a mix between the two. And so I am wanting to give you all the information that you need to really understand a lens review so that when they talk about chromatic aberration, you know what they're talking about. In fact, by the time you're done watching this class, you might be more knowledgeable about lenses than the people actually giving the review on the lenses themselves. 
So what we're going to be doing in here, we're just in an introduction phase right now. Uh, we're going to be doing some basic photography, and I know some of you have a lot of experience, and you may want to breeze past some of this, but I've, uh, I've buried some nuggets of uh, gold in there just to, to keep you all interested. So we're going to be going through focal length and aperture, which is basic, some basic photography stuff, but some more advanced sections in there as well. Some of the very interesting sections, I think, are the technology and feature section. This is where we go through the different letter codes on the lenses. What do they mean? What are they actually doing for you? How do the particular features on the lenses work? And then we're going to do kind of a rundown of all the different lenses. We're going to start with the X mount system, the zoom lenses, then we go to the prime lenses. And then there's not as many of the GFX lenses, the G lenses. And so we're going to do that all in one section. Now there's a lot to talk about when it comes to macro and tilt shift. So I've broken those out into special sections. Now, uh, if you've never dealt with tilt shift before, ooh, that's one of my favorite things. There's a lot of fun and really expands the capability of photography. Now we're even going to talk about non-Fujifilm options in this class. I, um, I have a number of other different ways of shooting, uh, different brands of lenses, lens adapters, boosters, and so forth. And I'm going to give you a lot of buying advice and advice about general brands and usage of different lenses on a Fuji X or G mount camera. We're going to talk about some of the different accessories and how to use those to get better results. And then finally, the last section, maybe the most important, is how to build a system and maintain a system. What lenses do you want to get? Which, uh, which ones do you want to add second and third? What's kind of the bonus lens? Uh, you know, specifically, I'm going to be attacking the subject in a different way. In earlier sections, I'll be talking about a particular lens and different things that you can do for it. In building a system, we're going to be talking about particular subjects, portraits, action photography, landscapes, and then which specific Fuji lenses are best for that task. And so there's going to be some really good recommendations on the best choices and the compromise between some of the different options that are available. And when you're done with this all, you're going to know about the full world of lenses. And that's really what it is here. Uh, when I was in college, I was uh, getting a photography degree. I do have a degree in photography. And up on the wall of my college dorm was a poster of all of the lenses for my camera mount system. And this is something I love looking at because it's like, look at all those options. And I didn't know what all those lenses did. And I knew it was interesting. I, I mean, I had it with a map of the world on the other wall, which is kind of the same thing. It's a world of options. And when you start knowing what those options are and how to use them, well, it just helps the growth of your photography. And that's what I hope this class is for you. Now, this is just the introduction of this particular class, which is going to be 13 sections in length. And to accompany the full purchase of this class, I've got a couple of different things for you, some things that you can print out. First up is the class notes, and this is going to have a lot of the graphics, the charts, um, the tables, key points of information that I mentioned in this class. And so I do have a number of reference charts that I show you on screen, and yeah, you can look at it on screen and read the information, but sometimes you want to print it out and see it. And so I have a guide here. This is not everything I'm going to say in the class but it is the most important graphics, tables, and information from the class. So this will help you out uh, referencing certain information that I talked about, key points from the class. Now, the, uh, the lenses are always changing, and, and I decided to come up with something different. So I have what's called a, a lens data sheet that is going to take every known factor and specification about a lens that I can come up with. Uh, because I have been very frustrated. I like lenses. I like to compare lenses. And I go to Fuji's website, which is pretty good. And I look up some information. And it doesn't have everything I want. So I go to a retail outlet, which also sells the Fuji lenses. And they have some other things. And then I watch a review. And they've got some other points. I'm like, could I get all of this in one spot? And so I've consolidated uh, as much information as an extreme lens nerd would want into one sheet uh, so that I can compare things. Now it's going to have uh, different categories. First category is key specifications. So obvious stuff like focal length, aperture, minimum aperture, uh, 
you know, whether it's 40 megapixel optimized or not. What is that? Well, yeah, we'll explain that in the class there. I also have the 35 millimeter full frame equivalents for focal length and aperture on there. I have a kind of a yes, no check mark for all the features that a lens might have. Does it have a focus ring? Does it have an automatic uh, switch for the aperture on it? Does it have OIS, optical image stabilization? How many stops of stabilization does it have? I've been hunting down all this information and logging it down. Uh, is it compatible with the 1.4 converter? And finally, what year did this lens come out? How new is it? How old is it? So I'm gonna fill it with just as much information as possible. And that way, when a new lens comes out, I don't have to update the whole class. I can just update the lens data sheet and put it in there and issue a, a new version of that sheet. And so both of those hard copy items, PDFs, are available with the full purchase of the class, which is a full 13 sections. We're just in the introduction section right now. And so that'll help uh, kind of fulfill this class and make it all that it can possibly be. All right, let's talk a little bit about lenses. So lots of lens choices, right? Why are there so many different lenses? Well, because there's a lot of applications that you can use lenses for. Now, a lot of lenses are designed with a particular usage in mind, but trust me, you can use any lens for any reason you want to use it. Uh, it's a matter of style and goals. What are you trying to do? Normally, you don't use wide angle lenses in sports photography, but sometimes it's a great option to show the whole scene when you have a particular good location and subject in which to shoot with that. And so it's a matter of knowing, okay, what, what is this lens designed for? Why is it designed like that for that particular subject? And what else can I use it for? And so trust me when I say that you can use any lens for anything you want. Now you might be limited in what you can get with it, but there is a lot of versatility in having all these different options. Now, if you are new to photography, well, the primary things that you wanna look for in a lens is first off, does it have the right lens mount? Is it gonna work on my camera body? What is the angle of view and what's that gonna do for me? What's the maximum aperture? And so once you know these three characteristics of a lens, you can start putting that lens into a certain category of what it's good for but there's a lot of other things that you want to know as well. So some of those key secondary things that you're going to want to know about is, you know, how good is the image quality from it? There's a lot of things that go into image quality, not just sharpness. What other features does it have? Does it have stabilization or something else? Um, and then physically, how big, how small is it? How easy is it to work? And there's a number of other things that go in here as well. And so there's a lot that we're going to be diving into. So in the world of lenses, we have two basic options. We have prime lenses and zoom lenses. Zoom lenses are very versatile because it's like a collection of primes, but it comes at a cost of light gathering ability with the lens, sometimes size, weight, and price. But they're both versatile and we're gonna talk a lot about both of them. The focal length can be found printed right on the lens so that you know exactly what type of lens it is as well as the maximum aperture. This is one of those key factors that is something that you really wanna know about when you're looking at different lenses. Usually when you look at the front of the lens, there's going to be those key pieces of information as well as lots of additional information. And in this class, we're gonna be going through every piece of that information and talking about the significance of it and how you use it and things to look for and ways to control that particular feature. And so you are going to know everything about lenses by the time you are done with this class. Now, before we really dive too far into lenses, let's talk about Fuji. So Fujinon lenses, that is a lens from Fuji. That's just kind of what they brand their particular lens as. And uh, they've uh, been making lenses for quite some time, but Fuji as a company, they make a lot of optical instruments uh, that are not camera lenses. And so they are designed for other purposes. And so, if you were to ask me who is among the best lens manufacturers in the world, Fuji would definitely be one. Uh, I think Canon's very good, Nikon, Zeiss, Sony has done very well. Um, there's a number, small number of companies that make good photographic lenses. Now there's a lot more other companies that are kind of on the up and start. And we're gonna talk about that when we get into the non-Fuji lens options in this class. But Fuji himself, they have a long history in photography, they have a long history in lenses, 
and they are one of the premier lens manufacturers out there. Now, Fuji themselves, good to know a little bit about their history. They started back in 1934 making film. They started with some very basic cameras and they had some uh, twin lens reflexes, range finders and medium formats in the 50s and 60s. And then in the 70s, they went with SLRs. And in the 80s, they started making medium format. Now they actually made medium format before that, but they really expanded what they had in the 80s um, with some medium format options. 88, they came out with their first digital camera, which was one of the first companies to offer a digital camera. They uh, changed the name from Fuji Photo Film. They decided to shorten it, which is why it's called Fuji Film now, which doesn't always make a ton of sense in a digital world, but they still make film. They, they might be the largest manufacturer of film. I'm not sure, but uh, it'd be quite likely they're still a fairly large company that makes still a lot of films. Now, the, uh, the systems that we're going to be talking about is the X and G systems. So these are mirrorless modern digital cameras that are relatively, uh, well, that's their most recent introductions. But in case you're wondering, what does Fuji know about digital or what does Fuji know about medium format? Trust me, <laughs> they've been doing this for a long time. They know exactly what they're doing. So our story here for this class kind of starts back in 2012 when they came out with the X-mount system. And so they came out with the X-Pro1, which was a very serious camera. It looked kind of like a modern digital Leica rangefinder camera. And you knew that they were serious and they were not like other companies when they come out with three prime lenses. Now, in case you don't know why I'm kind of going on about this, uh, this is because virtually every camera manufacturer who comes out with a new camera system starts with a basic zoom lens because they want it to be, you know, easy to use for general people. And this is where Fuji says, we want the serious photographers here. And this is something that people really, really loved is that, yeah, they're, they're designing a serious camera for people who take photography as something very important to them. So the X system has been going for a while and it's really expanded and really flourished. There's a ton of great lenses. So there's a lot to talk about with the X system. But everyone was kind of wondering, Fuji has a history of medium format. Are they going to do a modern digital mirrorless medium format? And in 2016, they came out with their G-mount body, the GFX system. And they brought out some high-end prime lenses as well as zoom lenses, which is nice to see on medium format as well. And this has been a growing system. Now, the medium format world was one that I am particularly familiar with back in the days. I used to work in a camera shop and my job was to manage the medium format department. And so I worked with Hasselblads and the Mias and Lenhoffs and Rollies and Veronica's and Fuji's. And Fuji made a, uh, an interesting eclectic collection of medium format cameras. And kind of the more mainstream ones were the Hasselblads and the Mamias. And that's what most of the pros were using. And as the world went digital, the cost of digital sensors and medium format cameras just went through the roof. And Fuji kind of waited a little bit to work out their mirrorless system and digital system. And then they introduced a relatively affordable medium format camera and system. And it has grown in popularity to the point now that it is the main medium format system. If you wanna go more than full frame, the GFX system is the way to go. They offer the most variety of modern designed new lenses uh, that are well supported in the industry. So wide angle telephoto, macro, tilt chip, they've got a ton of stuff out there for you. It's not uh, as big a numbers as the X system, but it's more than enough for professional photographers and serious photographers of a very, very wide variety of needs in there. So we're going to be talking about the G and the X system or the GFX system. And so these use different mounts. So there are different lens systems between the two, but they share a lot of the same technology because they're coming from the same company. Now the GFX system is considered a medium format based on the fact that it is larger than what we call full frame, which is the same size as 35 millimeter film. It is notably smaller, yes, than traditional medium format, but the world has changed from film to digital. And if you do want better quality than full frame, then this larger size sensor of the medium format uh, will do it. And so it measures 43.8, 
by 32.9, and this will often be uh, simplified into 44 by 33. So you may see some different numbers when you're looking at that system. The X system is what's known as a crop frame system. It's using an APS-C size sensor. APS-C is a film format back in the late 90s that was smaller than 35 millimeters so they could have smaller cameras and easier drop-in film loading. And these new digital cameras happen to kind of pick up on that size as something a little bit smaller and easier to manufacture when it comes to the sensor size and cost. And that's 23.5 by 15.6. Now, in the world of photography, it is impossible to dismiss the full frame or 35 millimeter system. It's got a very long history. And so when somebody writes an article, records a video, or talks about photography in any way, and they talk about lenses and focal lengths, they're often referring to lenses in the 35 millimeter or full frame focal lengths. And so we're going to have to be doing some conversions in this class just so that people know what lenses we're talking about. And so if you are using a particular lens on the Fuji X system, there is a conversion rate of 1.53, often just called 1.5 magnifying. So if you take a 100 millimeter lens from a full frame camera and you somehow mount it on your Fuji X system camera, it's going to look like a 153 millimeter lens. It's going to have a narrower angle of view. And this is a topic that we'll talk more about as we get through the class. And so the X system has a crop factor roughly of 1.5. Now, when you go the other direction, it's actually a larger size sensor. And so we're going to have a conversion rate that is less than one. It's 0.79. So if you take that 100 millimeter lens and you were to mount it onto a G system and it would somehow cover the full image area of the sensor, it would actually look like a 79 millimeter lens. And so there's a different collection of lenses for each of the different systems in here. And this is something that we'll talk lots more about in the focal length section. Now the X system has been around for quite some time and there's kind of been some design changes over time from those original lenses like the 35 1.4. They developed some uh, very nice lenses that had a push-pull autofocus clutch on it which is very nice but we don't see that anymore. They came up with a inexpensive version. Now normally I'd be calling them XF lenses but the problem is is that there are some XC lenses. What does the C stand for? Um, consumer, cheap, I'm not really sure. It's their less expensive lenses. This particular one has a plastic lens mounting on it. Now, optically, it's the same as the XF lens, but it's housed in a more affordable, lightweight, lower priced body, but we don't see too many of those from Fuji anymore. They've made a number of very small lenses, and I, I love these lenses here. I always thought that if I ran photography, manufacturer and I made lenses, I'd have a T line of lenses for travel, lenses that are especially small. Now in this particular case, uh, this 35 is part of a collection of small lenses from Fuji on their X system that was designed in, at least as far as I can see, for their X Pro series of cameras because they have a rangefinder window and you don't want the lens blocking so they made the lenses slightly cone shaped so they kind of come in like a cone. And that makes it a little bit easier to see through that rangefinder portion. It just makes the lenses a little bit smaller as well. So there's a, a nice collection of those lenses. And then we have kind of our modern uh, design of the lenses. So the 3314 is a replacement for that 3514, and it is optically a little bit more perfect. Maybe doesn't have as much character, but that's a matter of style and choice there. And so a lot of their modern lenses over the last several years have a very consistent design look and feel to them. Now some of their lenses are going to have a red badge on them that's going to let you know that this is kind of their premium stuff. And they aren't really clear as to what lenses get the badge and which ones don't as to why they do. It's clear you can see which ones they're on, but what's their classifications and you know how do they decide who gets the badge and who doesn't badge? I don't know, but uh, the good ones do have the badge. Now when it comes to the G system, well, this is a little bit, a um, little bit different uh, for two reasons. Number one, it's uh, it's a little bit newer system, at least from the introduction date, and so there hasn't been as much time for them to change styles, and so they have a very consistent design and cosmetic look to these particular lenses. The other thing is, is that they're not designing a lot of low-end lenses here. 
These are all top-end professional lenses. They're all fairly expensive for the most part, but they have a very consistent design because they're all kind of the best that they can be in that particular category. They don't make uh, two very similar options where here's the cheap option, here's the good option. They don't do that here. This is just kind of all the best stuff out there. And so you don't see that difference with the G system as you do with the X system. Now, this class is really going to focus on still photography as much as it can in just a lens class. You can use any and all of their lenses to shoot videos, but they're not the best tools for shooting video. Fuji does have a whole collection of video lenses. I actually have a lot of them, and I'm not even going to talk about most of them in this class, but I will talk about a, a few of them and a little bit of it right here. There is a very different design philosophy that goes into making a still lens compared to a cinema lens. Take, for instance, the 18 to 55, the classic kit lens, 2.8 to f4 lens. Well, they have an 18 to 55. It is a T stop 2.9. Uh, it is just a tad bit bigger there. Oh, I don't know, maybe four or five times the size and weight. And it is just a little bit more money as well because it is designed very differently for different types of purpose. So let's just run down the differences between a stills lens and a cinema lens. Now, a still photographer just wants quick autofocus. Focus on a subject as quickly as possible because you don't want to miss the moment. Cinema lenses want to focus very smoothly because if you're changing focus during the shot, you don't want it to be jerky in any sort of way. You want it to be smooth as butter. Now, we want quick aperture control as a still photographer so that we can get the picture as quickly as possible. And a videographer is going to want smooth manual control so that they can make an adjustment and it doesn't look jerky because they're shooting video every moment gets seen. They're not just looking for one moment, they're looking for everything in between. Now, as a still photographer, it's nice to have the smallest size equipment because then I can carry the most number of lenses in a particular size camera bag. That's not important to a film crew. They want consistent size. If this is mounted on some sort of dolly system or a steady cam, and you're changing lenses out, you don't want the weight to be changing. If you're using a matte box and filter system, it's nice if that's consistent so that when you change lenses, you can keep all the same filter systems on it. Uh, the stills lens is really designed for use by an individual photographer like you or me, whereas a cinema lens is used by a crew more or less, and that's gonna change the design philosophy on it. And so, you know, as I say, you and I are gonna own a collection of little lenses, uh, a rental company or perhaps a production house might be using a cinema lens. Lots more differences as well. We have f-stops and t-stops. Not going to dive too far into this right now, but f-stops is more theoretical and t-stops is more actual. f-stops is determined by the size of the glass and the lens and the focal length and how much light should be coming through. If it's slightly different, your individual camera can meter that difference and give you the right exposure. T-stops are designed for use with multiple cameras on with different lenses, all shooting. And when the director says, I need everybody at F8, everybody puts their, everybody puts their lens at F8, and it all looks exactly the same exposure-wise. And so a uh, different manner of working there. Now, a zoom lens is one that changes focal length back and forth. A parafocal lens is like a zoom lens that changes focal length back and forth but a parafocal lens is a lens that will hold its focus in exactly the same spot. In order to get that smaller size equipment that us still photographers like, they make some compromises with the lens design, uh, making them smaller, and that means that the focus is gonna change. And so when you have a zoom lens, and let's say you zoom in and focus on something, and then you zoom back to the wide angle, you should refocus with virtually all camera stills lenses because the focus is usually thrown off a little bit because of the design of the lens. With all of these lenses that we're talking about, minus two exceptions that I can think of right now, just two, uh, they're autofocus lenses. And so you can switch back and forth between autofocus and manual focus. The cinema lenses are manual focus, and that means you're gonna need someone to pull focus if you're shooting video. And if somebody's moving or the camera's changing, you're gonna need to have them know exactly where to focus. And so that's part of that whole crew of operation. Now, stills lenses have a traditionally a pretty short focus throw. So from infinity to close up, you don't have to turn the lens too much. Because cinema has a little bit more exacting standards, they want to be able to stop any particular place. And so that lens is going to rotate 
focus ring is going to rotate quite a bit when it comes to near and far focusing. We have third stop aperture settings because a third stop is a very small but noticeable increment of light either more or less and that suits our needs in photography quite well. The stepless aperture changes allow you to make changes while you are shooting without having those jump made, jumps made and it also allows you to make really fine tune adjustments so that you can get the exposure matching another camera and another lens system that might be having a, a different lens set up on it. Now there's a number of other details that are different. For instance, uh, you'll notice the information is on the side of the cinnamon lens and that's often because it's mounted on a very large system and it's hard to be above it. Uh, it's operated by a crew on some sort of device and so you need to be off to the side. That's where the focus puller or a camera assistant is. Whereas a stills lens has, all, has most all of the information on the top where a photographer can just you know tilt their camera back and look at it. And so there are a lot of differences between stills and cinema lenses. Fuji does make a couple of cinema lenses designed for the X-mount camera and I will mention those in that section of the class. Uh, but for the most part we're going to be talking about stills lenses. Uh, so you can see there is a lot going on in the design of a lens. Now the terminology is something that I kind of laugh at. A lot of people laugh at a little bit and this is not just with Fujifilm. This is with all the manufacturers. There's a lot of letters that get used to uh, let you know what is in a lens either technology wise or feature wise. Now I know some of this is is marketing. Uh, they're trying to let you know what this product has and why you should buy it. Uh, and just as a side note, I do not work for Fuji. I I'm not sponsored by Fuji. This is all of my own equipment. I like shooting Fuji because they make really good lenses and cameras and I enjoy shooting with them. Uh, so I am not trying to sell you lenses or anything else. I'm just trying to educate you. Now the, uh, the letters have a different meaning and I can imagine that there are, are many, many backroom meetings at uh, the headquarters to determine if this new feature deserves letters that we're going to put on the lens. And I'm sure that's a very proud accomplishment for a lens designer who comes up with a new coating or lens design or feature and I get a letter and we get to put it on the lens. And so that's usually where you can find out some of the most important information about a lens. Now uh, every manufacturer has their own little key codes for the letters and this is your quick key code for what all these different features mean and we're going to be going through these in this class in much more detail in different sections. So each letter code or word or name or whatever it is has a particular meaning and it is important to know for most photographers for most of the stuff not not everything as to what your lenses have and you know how it compares with everything else. So I'm going to take all this information and I'm going to break it down. I'm going to explain it in different sections of the class and we'll be talking a lot about this and how you use it, what it's good for, what it does and why it's important in there. And so this is where you can find information on all of those bits of information. So the next time you look at your Fuji lens brochure or your lens guide, uh, you're going to know what all of these things do and exactly what the lens does. Now in this class, it's a bit of a two for one. We're talking about both the X and the G system. And so I have developed a little bit of a, a little style choice here so that you can clearly pick apart which ones because I know some of you are only with the X system. Some of you are only with the G system and I know some of you have both. And so look for the blue X on the right and the green G on the left. And that is how I kind of have the whole class laid out so that you can quickly see what information is most relevant to you. Now in a lens class, going to be a lot of discussion about focal length and this is something that uh, is very important when it comes to lenses and it's something I've been talking about and showing in classes for a long time and usually I need to talk about it from a full frame perspective because that's where a lot of the industry is. That's where more pros shoot full frame than anything else in any one particular format. And so I need to talk about the focal lengths as they relate to full frame cameras and lenses. But that's not what Fuji does. Fuji has decided to go with a smaller system to make it a little bit more portable, easier to use, and they've gone with a larger system for those that want something even better than full frame. 
But here in this class, we're going to be talking about the X system, which has their own focal length numbers for different angles of view. And of course, we'll also be talking about the G system in here. And so you can pay attention to those green numbers or the blue numbers, depending on which system you're looking at, because for any different angle of view, there's going to be a different focal length that allows you to get to that, depending on what size sensor you have. Now, because these numbers are different, I decided maybe I should have names so that I could just use one name and I know what we're talking about. And these are names that are used pretty industry wide in here. Uh, so the normal lens, yeah, normal angle of view, okay, that's going to be the middle one. And how is that determined exactly? Well, let me give you a little bit of technical background on how a normal lens is calculated. It is the diagonal of the sensor. And I have a hard time explaining exactly why, but it is. But if you take the, uh, the height and the width of it, and then you find the diagonal, and that in millimeters, when it has a lens that is of that focal length, that becomes a very normal focal length lens. It has a normal perspective to it, very similar to our own eyes. And we'll talk uh, definitely a little bit more about this in the focal length section. So a normal lens on a full frame camera is a 43.3 lens. Now, nobody makes a 43.3 lens. And I think in the early days, they found it a little bit easier to make slightly telephoto lenses. And they like, uh, well, humans like nice round numbers that end in zero. So they says, let's just round it up to 50. And 50 is our normal focal length. And so that's where the 50 millimeter came from. But if you want a true normal, I'd look for a 45 or maybe even a 40 with full frame. With the medium format, uh, they have a 63, which corresponds with the 50 of full frame, and they have a 55 if you want to get kind of a true normal, in my opinion. Now with the X system, we're going to have a diagonal of 28, which makes 28 millimeters our normal, uh, but you'll find kind of their normal standard lens, either a 33 or a 35. Uh, with a four thirds, it's about half that of full frame, and so somewhere around 21 to 25 millimeters is their normal lens there. So that's how we're going to calculate things out as a starting basis for what a normal lens is. Now, as you go in either direction from there, of course, you're going to go into the realm of wide angle or telephoto, but let's go ahead and name these specifically. So we have short telephotos and moderate wides, and we go into standards and then supers and extremes or ultras, depending on which direction we're going. And so you will see me using these terms and they apply to either the X system, the full frame system, the micro four thirds or the G system, whatever you want. In fact, uh, this is one of the reasons why I've put all this information in the PDF so that you can kind of reference it down here. If I have a lens in one category, how does it match up with a lens in another system uh, that I might be interested in comparing it to? And so that's going to be in the class notes PDF. Now, before I get too much further into this, I have a couple of disclaimers. Um, there are examples in this class that were used from a variety of cameras. You know, if, if I need a, an example to show you what 80 millimeters or an 80 degree angle of view is, I'm going to look for whatever best showcases and tells that story. doesn't matter if it came from a Fuji or something else. I'm just going to use whatever helps explain the point that I am trying to show you. If I'm trying to show you a starburst, what a starburst is, uh, that might have come from a different camera. That's not really critical to the issue. Now, uh, one place that I am very, very strict about things is when I am talking in the aperture section about depth of field. Uh, depth of field is very critical when it comes to what sensor size you're using and what aperture you're using. So all of that is absolutely spot on. But I am trying to explain things and whatever picture explains that point of view is really what I'm going to be using in there uh, most of the time. Now, every once in a while, I do round numbers off for simplicity. And so, you know, when the sensor size is 43.8, I might just say it's 44. Now, generally, these rounding of numbers is not going to have a great impact. But if you do look up on an online calculator or you run the math out yourself, John was off by 0.3. I realize that and I'm trying to simplify things, make things easy to understand. And that's just my choice as being the teacher. Now, I do realize that this class is recorded at a certain point in time. 
And there's a good collection of lenses on both the X and the G system, but yeah, at some point there's going to be some new lenses. Um, I'm already aware about some of these new lenses that are going to be coming out, uh, but I don't have all the information on them at this time. The information that you're getting in this class is going to be applicable to all future lenses, bar something dramatically changing in the world of photography. And so you're going to be able to use the information that I give you in this class to understand everything else that comes down the pike. And so I will, you know, update the, the data sheet uh, as need be with, with new information as it comes along uh, the line uh, so that you have up-to-date information in there. Uh, but there is going to be a lot of good information in here that, once again, you can just apply to all the new lenses as it, as it comes down the road. All right. See you in the next section.